Talk to us about that liquidity. Is that really just from having built dry powder? And also talk to us about the connection uh, with NAM Darter. Does that help you with uh, financing? Yes, so we've been doing our thing. When New York City prices were very high, we, were, we, couldn't, we wouldn't be buying stuff. We would be buying our retail throughout 38 or 39 states. And we're well diversified in that area. We still have, that's our core business. Your retail space, the mall business. Malls and shopping centers. But now we've seen the prices of these office buildings have dropped so much that it's, it's hard to not make money at these levels. And others have their challenges with the debt. They really are not in the position to be buying new deals because they're dealing with their problems, with the current lenders, with not being able to do build outs. And I think there's two advantages in, for our position. One is that we're able to buy these at a steep discount, which helps with making money. Secondly is we can afford, we have the liquidity to do the build outs, to do the tenant improvement work, to do the base building work, to modernize the lobbies, modernize the elevators, yeah. the, all this stuff that needs to get done in order to, to sign up tenants. Not only we can help to keep our tenants by being able to pay and invest in the tenant improvement work, and also being able to buy new tenants from other buildings that are in prop. How have much is it costing you to refit? Because I know that's a big chunk of change, right? I'm looking at deals that you're doing for 100 million, 150 million, 170 million, but you still have to add, I'm guessing, 10 or 20 million dollars to refit these offices so you can get new tenants in there. Yeah. How, uh, how much? How much are you looking at on average in terms of refitting? So you know, it, it's very capital intense business, and I think for that reason, our strategy is you have to buy the better buildings. You have to buy the outside of New York. We're focused on A assets, the top three or top five buildings in that marketplace because the, the tenant improvement work doesn't change whether you're in a C building or an A building, you still, it will, the sheetrock, and the, it still costs around the same. So the payback is way better if you own the better assets and it is intense and that's why we have to buy these assets at a steep discount. So I have to ask the question I think everybody wants to know. You're talking about the steep discount. Bruce Richards talking about the idea that we're at the bottom. What are we talking? On 3rd Avenue, can you buy a building 25 cents on the dollar of what it was for B and C? Or what kind of discount is it? Where are values? I would say it's relative. An occupied building on 3rd Avenue pre-COVID uh, versus a vacant building today on 3rd Avenue could be more than a 75% discount. More from that. than 75 yes. cents. So are we talking 15 cents? I mean, that's there, incredible. There are assets that are vacant that may sell in a double digit price range. Wow. Under $100 or right around that range. Wow. It's still a lot of money, though, that you're spending, right? I mean, where are you getting the financing? Are you, are you working with banks? Are you selling bonds? What markets? How's it look? So in, in our situation, we've always believed in low debt. So we don't have a lot of debt on our balance sheet. We have a good cash flow. Uh, and banks would finance us because they know we don't over leverage it. And we're willing, to, in some cases, to give personal guarantee on some loans, while others want to do a non-recourse loan, which is almost impossible in office space today. We also have an Israeli company. Uh, you know, we're public in Israel as well. So that also helps with them build up our trust over, over the last, like, I would say, seven, eight years. and you know. So we're able to have access to, to Israel money as well.